So thank for that uh, moment of patience, everyone that's joining in. I see the room is filling up quite um, quickly for our first webinar uh, of this year, 2018, a new year. I'm not sure if any of you follow the significance of numbers, but uh, number eight is the one of wealth and prosperity. So the fact that we've got uh, eight in this year is perhaps a good one. Um, uh, in the room, we've got a full room, in fact, today of leaders, Ibasa leaders, because we're going to speak about uh, the Ibasa plans for 2018 in terms of members engaging in on the regions. So uh, welcome, Ben. Uh, uh, Chengatai, uh, Christian, uh, Daryl, David, um, Julian, uh, Luther, Lynn, uh, Nikki, Portia, everyone. In fact, you can follow, you can see who the people are in the room too. Wilfred, there's some new names, Violet, that I'm not uh, aware of, that I haven't met. So welcome to those people. Um, let me just uh, switch off the uh, screen share. Then you'll be able to see all of us in the room. My name is Christoph Oosthuizen, and I'm the host of this uh, webinar series that IBASA and the EPI is offering business advisors jointly uh, as a way of us improving our ability to serve our clients and to do the job that uh, we are called to for a lot of us to be working with entrepreneurs, small businesses, business owners, even larger businesses in helping them to reach their potential so that in the end we can have a society that we're proud of and that deliver on the quality of life that the people living in our country deserve. So um, this is all about learning and sharing. Um, and as we start, I'll ask that uh, you introduce yourself. I see Terence has done so um, uh, in the chat area already and where you are from. Um, if you wish, you can also mention in there what area of business support you are an expert in uh, you will be surprised. In fact, um, we found that people have connected after webinars in the past and started uh, projects together uh, based on them linking up around the expertise that they've mentioned on the webinar. So uh, apart from Terence, um, please, uh, Daryl, thank you. Hello, um, Daryl is from Johannesburg. What is, what is your um, expertise, Daryl? Maybe you can share that with us too. Um, who else is going to tell us um, where they're from and uh, what they are focusing on in their business advice work. So the purpose of today's webinar, by the way, is to be engaging. So I would ask that you please do participate in the chat. Um, we are 46 people in the room right now. One has put up his hand. We'll see if we can inject you into the live room eventually. But um, that is what you put your hand up for. So just to navigate through the controls that you'll see in front of you, you can raise your hand. Normally that is to be injected into the room um, if you want to actually say something and be seen. But otherwise there are two uh, uh, things that you need to note on the uh, display in front of you, uh, the Q and A where you post your questions. So that is where we will go at the end of the webinar to look at all the questions that people have posted. So you can open that window and you can post your question there and we will surely come to it and uh, attend to it. Um, if you post a question in the chat area, which is the other click that you can, the other window that you can open, we may miss it. So please participate in the in the chat by sharing and commenting as we go along through the webinar. But put your questions in the Q&A so we are sure to actually come to that. That's Those are the only real rules. Um, for the rest, it's our normal format to start off with our CEO, Joseph Chiwila Willow. Um, if you don't know him, Joseph, why Joseph? Welcome this morning. Um, we also have Lesejo from Ibasa in the room, always willing to help and smile and sort something out. Um, and then we're fortunate, uh, normally we do not have uh, regional leaders from Ibasa in the room, um, but we have, we have five of them. Um, we are more regions, um, but we can't fit everyone into the room, unfortunately. So um, we're not uh, Tumelo, Ricardo, Arnold and Carl, are uh, regional chairs and um, they will have good opportunity to share some of the plans that they have for their regions and uh, perhaps uh, in sharing we can also learning from each other. Um, so that's the topic of today's webinar is how we as members can benefit most from our membership through what is happening in the region and our engagement with uh, our uh, leaders and through the leaders of course the other members that we have in the regions too. So without um, further ado, um, 
uh, um, our CEO, Joseph, may I introduce you? Am I going to introduce myself or you're going to introduce me? <laughs> can I go ahead? Uh, no, you can, you can go ahead. I think most people do know you, but you may okay. say something about yourself. Maybe that is not a bad idea because we normally jump into the organizational stuff straight out. So uh, I know that you're running quite an um, active uh, business support service and accounting firm um, on the East Rand. So maybe you can say something about that too, if you wish. Oh, yes, I do wish to say that. And uh, can I say greetings to all those who are going to be participating in this webinar? Uh, my name is Joseph Munjezi Chwilo I am an accountant by profession, indeed running a practice in uh, Fosloras and the CEO of Ibasa. And I am also a pastor, a junior pastor in a church breakthrough ministries in Leondale, Jamieston. And um, I'm very excited. Uh, may I also take this opportunity to wish you all a prosperous and indeed a very blessed 2018 and the future uh, beyond this year. Um, like uh, last year, I believe we had a very busy, successful year last year. We may not have achieved all our objectives as set in the beginning of the year or as targeted, but we have made a, a milestone. We have uh, done something that we will make us happy. And um, towards the end of the year, we, we launched KZN, a regional association. And that was, the launch was very successful. And uh, may I say that while we were in KZN launching the, uh, the KZN chapter, we also had a webinar with Free State. And uh, I'm very impressed and excited with Free State because we had a webinar on the day when we were launching KZN. And we also had subsequent to that, we had another one where they were preparing and planning. Now, um, and thank you, uh, Christoph, for introducing this uh, idea of us discussing regional associations. This also gives our members countrywide, because we are a national organization, to know who their leaders are. And because some of them have not already started setting up committees, today our members have an opportunity to to set up, uh, I mean, to also contribute and uh, also avail themselves to serve in their structure, in the committee within their region. So it's an opportunity that they can do. And I'm also excited about Western Cape, the way they are planning and putting things together. I think that is going to be one of the biggest launch that we're going to have. And um, I'm looking forward to that. And yesterday, I also received a call from um, Menier Foslo from uh, Northwest Vukonibu Pirima uh, discussing how we can start planning. I will be going there uh, next month sometime, attending some meetings there, and I'll be able to meet with him. So uh, to members who are here, here is an opportunity to get involved and help shape your institute. Now you have an opportunity today, not only your regional uh, association, you have an opportunity to also engage head office today. We've got Lesiho here and myself are here and do engage us and uh, you know, constructive uh, criticism It's needed. We're not saying we are perfect, but if there are things that you believe we should do, uh, please do inform us. Now, just to share in terms of um, what happened, those who were at the ICBA last year, um, the, the conveners of the ICBA have proposed that we're going to have another one, same time, I think it's from the 21st to the 22nd. So let us start working and preparing towards that. And yesterday we were at the services CETA we were discussing a secular, you will have heard some of you are aware of a secular number one coming from QCTO. And that secular uh, wants to stop or 
uh, there are some qualifications that are expiring and all our qualifications, if not, yeah, most of our qualifications, if not all, are expiring this year and some will be expiring in a year or two. And uh, we are in discussions. I will be in, I will be calling uh, Edcom to meet, to discuss that we can make an input. Already I have identified a number of qualifications that we should not allow. And I'm pleased to say the services CETA is also assisting us. They have already motivated why these qualifications should not be uh, allowed to expire or be cancelled completely. So this year is going to be an exciting year. I have already started engaging with the services CETA for us to sign an MOU. And they've indicated yesterday that uh, our MOU is not going to be a, a serious issue. An MOU will be signed soon. And you'll be hearing about uh, our candidacy, in, in other words, articles, learnership that we would like to introduce with our professionals who will be running their firms. And um, I know that Mr. Kalaluka may not be very happy with me. Members, we are also uh, accredited by CIPC as a business rescue uh, uh, practitioners. Our members can apply as business rescue practitioners. Now, that is a very serious responsibility and position. You have to be, your record must be impeccable. You've got to be very clean. Now, we have our members who some have been dismissed by other institutes and some have never done any one uh, rescue, but they're claiming that they've done or they are doing it. Now that it's a fraud and it can be a problem. Now, yesterday, I'm pleased to report that yesterday I had a meeting after the services CETA me meeting, I met Mr. Justice Kudumela, one of our members. Apparently he's a senior business rescue practitioner. And I will be discussing with the committee, the task committee that is responsible, so that we can also have a system together with Div and Mr. Kalaluka, empower our members and by bringing value to our members. And it's last year where we brought business rescue to our members. So we are indeed adding value for those who are running their small firms. And um, we will be inviting you avail yourself. The reason I met Mr. Justice Kudumela yesterday is because he invited me and he wanted to see me. Uh, uh, and he actually said, I am available. What is it that I can do? Mr. Kudumela is an MBA and uh, he's, he's, a big, he's got a big home with vets and he's willing, he's running his practice. Now, <clears throat> I'm not just promoting him but I'm trying to show that if you avail yourself and you invite us, we'll come and discuss with you and we will you, um, uh, get involved with the Institute to help build this. This is not Christopher's Institute or JMT's Institute. It's a professional body that belongs to all of us and uh, enjoy the discussions today. Let us be robust where we can and engage us. We're not scared to be. Lisiko is very strong. She can take everything that you will say to her. And, and the leadership that we have, Vinod, um, Mr. Ricardo, Dr. James, and Tumelo there, and um, all the leaders that are here, and Menor Fenta as well, uh, Karel. So they are here, engage us and critique us, tell us how we should build this professional body, which we're trying to make it a leading and an institute of choice. And uh, I want to tell you that the Tumelo or uh, Saika will never beat us this year. We're going to show you. <laughs> we can maybe give the a chance to, to just give us an update from the officer's side but before you yeah. go uh, uh, Joseph if you can shortly just uh, 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 paint us the picture of the structure of Ibasa and how the regions oh, yes yes oh yeah and to the regions I think that's quite an important context for our discussion today oh yes um, yeah thank you so much and actually that uh, brings there is a proposal that we have uh, given a secretariat to the board and we have a committee uh, in the uh, in dr gliwayo uh, and um mr benjamin manasso a director economic director in in swane who are looking at that proposal uh, uh, in, with regard to the structure but you will be informed accordingly but just to give you briefly how is the structure uh, this organization, as you all know, um, it's not owned by any other person, but by members who are in good standing. And the leader of the organization is the chairperson, 
and the chairperson works with a board. And uh, the board also has got a CEO who is the, the face and the, um, the spokesperson of the organization, and that is myself. And I work with the administrator, senior administrator, who is Lesijo, and we've got a team of two other administrators in the office, membership administrator, that is um, um, Tabi Singh, yeah, and uh, also Teddy Mapubure, who is in finances. And the, uh, this is the team that we have that's running. And we have an exco. An exco team is made of four people. It's the chairperson, uh, 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 Mr. Vinod, and uh, our deputy chair, Mr. Uh, Tulu, and also two other members who are on exco is Dr. Riwayo and Dr. Um, um, Gazikwa. Now, the regions have got a chairperson. All the regions currently have got a chairperson, except one region that is um, uh, Northern Cape. Um, and also, we're not having uh, our, our, our chairperson in Limpopo is having challenges. He's not as active as we would have liked him to be active. And that is an area that we will be looking at. Now, all the areas have a, 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 a chairperson. Now, from today, we are asking all other regions that have not started putting together a committee, they need to have people who will volunteer to set up a committee today. And that committee will be sort of an ex co in that region. And it's the committee that uh, will have a treasurer uh, or the finance person, and you will have a secretary, and you will have a, a, other committee members. And uh, you may have some people who, so you must emulate the, the main structure that we have. We have got various committees and depending on the needs that you have, would advise that you should set up and have committees in your region. You may have someone who's going to be uh, responsible for events and activities who will be a, a committee member. And you would have someone who will be responsible for education and you have someone who is responsible for governance and uh, opportunities. So uh, depending on how, obviously based on the knowledge and experience of the leader, and that's how you are going to structure exactly how you are going to be running your, your region. And uh, there is a, a document that we call terms of reference, uh, not a constitution because the regions are not independent. They are a satellite of a head office. They don't have a constitution, but they've got the terms of reference that guide them as to how they, they, they should organize themselves. And all the chairpersons have, have had seen or have had sight of, um, of this document that it's known as TOR, terms yes. of reference. I think that gives us a great uh, uh, framework to understand how the organization fits together. Thank you yes. very much. Um, Nasekh, I'll ask you just now to perhaps uh, explain to us how the committees work, because that's another way, apart from through the regions, that members can be active um, in Ibasa. And we have launched uh, a, a poll here just to ask uh, if people are members and if not, if they are considered. And it looks to me like um, uh, we've got a good job here to um, get uh, about a quarter of those that are on the webinar here today to, who are not Ibasa members but have, considered, have been considering to join um, to actually take that step. Um, because this is the way that we protect our profession, is to come together um, in a professional association. 59% uh, are members in good standing of those that have participated in the poll. 15, their membership have expired. So looking forward to see you renewing yours. And then that 26% of people on the webinar of the year today that um, have been considering to join. So hopefully by the end of that, um, the Sejo, there will be something to follow on. For you. So maybe if you can just, um, Lesejo, if you can quickly explain to us what uh, these committees are that um, uh, IBASA has, as well as what the process is to become a member. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Lesejo, and we are based here at head office. Um, just to quickly summarize, we have committees, national committees that we work with. Um, those are usually advertised annually if there's a need. Um, they are based on experience and um, those members firstly who are willing to avail themselves to join the committees. We have officially after the AGM in 2017 also welcomed 
NOMCOM taking a more central role in the appointments of committees that function. So do look out for communication either via our bulk emailing or the website when we are looking to have more people on the committees. We, we definitely look forward and we always give preference to our own members who can always come in and assist the Institute to be better. Just to use the words that our chairman uses, Shahi, we certainly are interested in growing our own timber. So please, if there's an opportunity, come join us. We look forward to having you on board. Um, on our side as well, as you know, it means that we'll also be working closely with the regions um, by virtue of offering support and making sure that our regions become effective. As we know, it is important for our members to know each other, not only for small chats, but we're hoping to create a business network that is vibrant of business advisors. And we want to begin with our own members taking advantage of this network that IBASA offers, not only of local members, but also international members. We have quite a number of our members who have international um, backgrounds, as well as excellent members who have local backgrounds. So we offer quite a diverse network for our own members to take advantage of. As you know, there's always a lot to talk about. We have a growing relationship with the service center, a growing relationship with CEDA. So look out for us. Um, we're about to make real waves and we'd love you to be a part of it. Over to you, Chris. So uh, just a, a technicality there, if uh, that 25% uh, a quarter of the people on the webinar today, if they are looking to uh, join Ibasa, what should they do? We have our online platform. You can join us on the online platform on our website, as well as contact us via our available emails um, at admin at Ibasa or info at Ibasa if you'd like to know more about membership and joining us as an institute. Right. Okay. So send that email. Maybe, uh, let's see, you can just type the details there in the chat area so people can pick it up there, as well as the link to the web page that they can initiate the sign up process. So please, uh, if you haven't become a member yet, if you're not a member yet, and or if you have to renew your membership, this is the time to do so. Um, because 2018 is really the year that we're going to make those way. Thank you. So let's Thank move you, Chris. We are a bit uh, behind the time that we wanted, but I think we still have enough time to tackle this issue properly. In the meantime, if you can go back to the as, as, as attendees, if you can go back to the poll and just look there, what are the most important things, according to you, that you look, would be looking for if you're not a member yet or that you are looking for if you are a member from Ibasa? Select three of those, um, one, two, or three, that are the most important for you. And we'll come back later on um, to see what people have voted for. We'll keep this poll open for a while. So if you need to uh, consider it slowly and make up your mind, that's also fine. Um, so especially while we have the regional chair persons, I think that's the right way to say it, um, explaining to us what is happening in the regions and what the plans are for the year. So I wonder, Ricardo, uh, Adamus, if we can start with you from the Eastern Cape's perspective. Uh, what are your, what, what is the membership like in the Eastern Cape? Um, uh, what are your plans for the region? And how can regional members participate in uh, this year, upcoming year, in a boss activity? Thanks so much, um, Christoph, for the, um, the question. Uh, welcome to all of the members from Eastern Cape and, and further. Um, I was just busy responding to some of the questions in the chat room, so I was a bit distracted there when we started off. Uh, but at present, we, we have a total membership of about 80 members in the Eastern Cape. I ran the numbers yesterday with a team from the head office, and um, regrettably, we only have about 16 of those being regular in regular standing which really indicates to us that there is a need for us to do some work in terms of just sewing into the existing database, making contact with the members and finding out how we could support them and assist them in actually becoming regular members again. The landscape in the Eastern Cape at the moment, um, is, is, nothing has changed, I'll be honest with you, in the last two or three years. 
Uh, we still find that in most business advisory, business mentorship uh, support is going to your state agencies like CEDA, uh, Eastcape Development Corporation, NYDA, uh, and some of the others. We have had quite a proliferation of enterprise development programs and incubation programs as well. So most of our members are active in that space, either as business advisors, business mentors, or lending support to incubators in, that, in, the, in those programs. Uh, I think what is one of the bigger concerns for us, Christoph, um, is the fact that um, some of the challenges that, we've, that we're picking up is that there's a lack of a consistent methodology for business advising. And also this is actually exacerbated because the, the business support and business advice uh, approach required by one incubator against another is completely different. So we're finding that most of our, our, our mentors and business advisors seems to be gravitating towards the institutions and agencies who have the, the least rigid requirements from them. But in the process also, it is weakening the quality of our business advising within the Eastern Cape. Uh, because there are, there are low um, barriers to entry as well, we find that we have a, a surge in terms of new, uh, newly qualified BCom and other graduates entering this space and calling themselves business advisors or business consultants, much uh, you know, at the expense of the SMMEs that they work with. So there definitely is a need for us just to raise the barriers and to raise the standards a bit in terms of the quality of business advising that is actually currently happening. Uh, some of the uh, other challenges as well is the distortion um, in terms of marketing and costing of services. You find obviously that your newbies with low overhead structures are able to do business plans at a fraction of what it actually costs you. And it becomes difficult for your more seasoned, more experienced and more, um, let's just call it more structured business advisors to actually compete in that space. So when you quote for, for work with CEDA, NYDA and others, obviously it becomes difficult for you to really uh, make meaningful money out of that process. And the quality of uh, our products is questionable as well, as I mentioned. Uh, many of the incubation and enterprise development programs have a lower sort of quality standard in terms of what they expect from the business advisor. And that has cascaded in terms of what is actually seen or manifesting in the marketplace as BDS and business advisory services. And there is a need for a more formal, more structured um, knowledge sharing and the technical transfer in terms of the quality of, of BDS and service provision in the Eastern Cape. That's just a high level sort of overview in terms of what, what we found to be the, the current um, status quo. Just in terms of the structure going forward, there was one question by a member in terms of where we're at in terms of the process. It's still quite new. Uh, we have just started engaging some of our members who are in regular standing, just notifying them about the, the move towards um, you know, official, officializing or mobilizing members in the, in the Eastern Cape to become part of the regional association. We have called for support and volunteers to become part of this exercise as well. And we believe that having a focal point to a regional structure will definitely help us in terms of addressing some of the challenges I've just mentioned. Uh, having some more immediacy of support when there are local requirements or local requests, it becomes easier for us to respond based on proximity. But also having a knowledge sharing platform, uh, we can also exchange best practices will be a great platform for us to use. We, uh, we are blessed in the Eastern Cape with having a number of facilities available for us to use for those kind of workshops at no cost. So we certainly are looking forward to hosting some of those information sessions and knowledge sharing platforms as well. It becomes important for us as well, colleagues, to look at localization of training and some CPD events as well, where we could, for example, with uh, the emergence of a lot of uh, wind farms in our area as well, we find quite a, a large um, enterprise development component attached to it as well. So we could localize and see how we could best support business advice and support uh, to SMMEs in the renewable energy space as well. Uh, most importantly for me would be to see the regional association or the regional um, forum supporting us in terms of creating a community of practice where we could have more standardized methodologies for business advising quality assurance of what we actually put out as our, our efforts as business advisors and mentors and consultants, but also looking at a more consistent approach to marketing and costing and pricing of our services to the marketplace. So um, that's just a very short um, introduction. I've had some good interaction already with uh, some of our members locally. We have shown an interest, Terence, um, not Craig being one of them, uh, Wilfred Nieke as well as Tobile, and others who have said that they want to be part of this move to actually look at how we could professionalize and uh, create an official structure for IBASA in the Eastern Cape. You'll see that there has been some interest on the um, webinar this morning from um, not members, but uh, people who are aspiring to become members. 
So we certainly hope that we can make this vital and increase the, um, the, the, the number of advisors we have in our field in the Eastern Cape as well. Thanks, Christoph. Thanks, Dean. Yes, so thank you very much, um, Ricardo. I, if I was living in the Eastern Cape, I would feel in, inspired to immediately um, do that phone call, I think, if you put your number there. Or do you want to put your email? Just type your email in the, email. the chat as well. Um, if someone from the Eastern Cape would like to join the team of making it happen there, that they can do so. Okay. Uh, on we go, um, um, Ricardo, before we move on to the next region, um, what, is, there, is there a date, a specific activity that's being anticipated to happen soon? Uh, I'm going to be engaging uh, Christoph with uh, the team at head office. Uh, I have had an email to um, Joseph already indicating that we are quite keen to have a sort of face-to-face -face platform where we can meet all of our current regular members and engage uh, in a sort of information session first and thereafter possibly look at a, a launch date towards March this year. Great. Okay. So um, there's also the the communication that comes from head office uh, directly to the regions. Um, so if um, if you don't connect with Ricardo directly, then that uh, avenue st will still be available for you to receive that information. Um, Content-wise, Ricardo, you, I, I got three points from you, and I'm interested to hear what the other um, regional chairs have to say about these. The one is about quality assurance, you know, sort of so through IBASA in the regions, we can make sure that there aren't these flyby nights coming in and uh, offering at no fee, really, a service that's substandard. Um, and linked to that localization of training. So how do we improve our own ability to offer quality services is linked to training and we can't always travel to other areas because of the cost. So can we localize that through the regional network and then the community of practice and quality assurance and marketing and pricing and those are the kind of things that we can start comparing notes on if we are connecting with people on a local level. So three really important points in terms of what the role of Ibasa's regional associations could be. So let's hear from other regions. Um, so Arnold Fosluer is from the Northwest. Um, Arnold, if you can unmute yourself and then we can hear from you what your plans are and what the situation is currently there in the Northwest. Uh, thank you very much, Christoph. Popi uh, Rima uh, or the Northwest uh, province has been neglected as far as our membership and the growth of the uh, IBASA of our institution is concerned and we are really uh, going to make the effort and early in February uh, me and the CEO uh, will be visiting the region and we really want to call on you and encourage you to volunteer uh, to serve as committee members on the regional association committee. We need a minimum of five members with a maximum of nine to start off and to, to launch or uh, relaunch IBASA in uh, Northwest province. Uh, what I can say, and it's not, I'm not proud to say that, is that there are only five members, uh, IBASA members in uh, Northwest two from Koch, two from Rustenburg, and one from Hartis. Uh, that's not good enough, and we shouldn't practice. So looking forward to meet with you. Uh, I think that uh, with the four districts of, of Northwest, uh, each of them has got its own identity, uh, uh, like Boyanala, Platinum, Rustenburg, and and we must not neglect the, uh, the Buffalo King area. And then Dr. Kenneth Kahuna district is Poch and, and Clarkstock, with the most of the activities taking place about 30% uh, of the GDP of Northwest comes from, uh, uh, from the Dr. Kenneth Kahuna district. Uh, there's potential. I have been in Northwest operating there as a professional. I've grown up there. In total, I can say I've been living there close to 40 years in the in, in Northwest province. And looking forward for, for members to, to contact me. I will leave my uh, uh, information and my cell and my email address 
on the chat uh, room, on the chat uh, page. Uh, please contact me so we can set up something and looking forward for a launch in, uh, in February with the CEO. Thanks, uh, Christoph. Uh, great, uh, Arnold. Thank you for that. So uh, you've got the five. The five are there. What's your regional uh, association with? So luckily you meet that requirement at least. It's just a good starting point. Uh, but what would you say? So um, uh, Ricardo shared with us uh, quality assurance, localized training, a community of practice as three kind of pointers of value that members may be looking at on a, on a regional level or a local level. What would you say would bring those business advisors that aren't members to become members in, in your region? I think they, they would be encouraged you know, to, to stand out against what we have at the moment. We all know that there, there's a racket in the marketplace as far as business advising and consulting is concerned. And we've got really poor people uh, uh, in the market and we, we want to even uh, call on them to become members so that because one of our tasks or objectives of IBASA is, is to grow the quality of our members and educate our members, we've got a specific focus on, on doing just that. And, and maybe, maybe just uh, uh, sort of leave, leave some credibility for the profession of business advising. And I think that is the main objective, uh, Christoph, that uh, there should be credibility if you're a member and it should be uh, actually uh, 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 coming from institutions that it, uh, it, it must be uh, it, nothing accepted without the Ibasa member doing the job, whether it's a business plan, mentoring program, whatever, or training. Yeah. For the individual, the attraction is that I can distinguish myself in the marketplace as a certified or um, assessed uh, a graded business advisor, and therefore you're sure about the quality of service that I deliver. Um, and you know, sort of give a competitive advantage to your offering in the marketplace, because then you can show that you have the competencies, you've been assessed independently, and as part of a professional body, you represent a certain value set too that uh, guarantees a level of service delivery that's gonna lead to good results, as opposed to guessing what, what you're going to get if you have someone that's unassociated. So I think that's a strong argument to make out and looking forward also to see how the institutions respond to the prompts that they are getting to actually make it perhaps even a requirement that uh, business advisors need to be graded by a professional body. And I think that will make a big shift um, in the marketplace. Certainly. So thank you for those points. So if we can jump to the free state, it's not a long jump. Um, uh, Tumelo uh, Chorchechi is the regional chair there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll allow you guys also, uh, by the way, panelists, to um, type something about yourselves there. We may not have much time to discuss all of that, but um, you, know, sort of, uh, you can use the opportunity to also tell us about what you do in those reasons. But could we focus on Ibasa for now, Tumelo, if you unmute yourself? Um, what has been happening in the Free State and what are your plans for the future? Good morning. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Christoph. Yes, indeed. I think with the limited time, it helps just to focus on Ibasa, but I'm also in business support service based in Bloemfontein, uh, right in the middle of the country. Uh, look, just briefly to touch on Ibasa, uh, we've had an online uh, chapter launch during November, as already indicated by the CEO, uh, which was very successful. And uh, coming from there, we were able to uh, establish an interim chapter committee, uh, which has started functioning with immediate effect. And uh, up, up to last week, we've had two meetings already. One was actually a physical meeting, where we looked at the planning for the rest of the uh, calendar year. And we are very excited uh, in the free state uh, because in the regional chapter committee, you know, we are representing three districts of the five districts that we have in the free state. So there's Tabo uh, Mufutsanyana, uh, Mangaum, and also Fezile Dabi, uh, which is a nice spread uh, looking forward. I think even in our terms of reference, we're looking at establishing some districts uh, uh, associations to support the regional uh, structure. 
so we are already halfway there. Uh, and I think also going forward, we are looking at the physical launch, which we have already planned for the third week in April. Uh, obviously the details will fall in due course, but leading up to the physical launch, we want to embark on some roadshows across the the province of Free State, and we've already identified a few community radio stations that we want to work with to increase the brand awareness. Uh, and we don't think it will cost a lot of money. Obviously, we want to be cost effective in our approach to doing things. But just to continue in terms of what we are doing, we are also leveraging on this relationship with the services sector. Uh, in the province, I've made contact with the uh, provincial forum for services city, and I will be serving on the provincial structures of the uh, services city on behalf of uh, CIDA, on behalf of Ibasa, I mean. Uh, and then we've made interaction with uh, CIDA in the district of Tabumufutsanyane, and through them, we are able to establish connections with some five LED units of the five uh, municipalities in that district, which I think uh, boasts very well for our We're not looking too, too good, but we are hopeful that with the plans we have in place, uh, this will go down well. That's in summary, uh, Christoph. Great stuff. So you actually had, what, was, what, what happened at the event? Which one is this? You said you had a, a physical event. What what transpired oh, at this? Not physical yet. The physical is planned for uh, sometime in April. Oh, it's still coming. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood. Oh, yeah, the physical was just a committee meeting. Okay. Uh, it was important that after the online launch that we meet in person, that we can put the name to the face, and then we were able to look at our terms of reference. Uh, very. Uh, valuable inputs coming from that, and also in terms of our planning going forward. Great stuff. So your five to nine uh, regional association members, uh, committee members, that's set up. So you've got a functioning structure there. Most definitely, yes. Great stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's the first step, I suppose, in making sure that the region starts functioning well. Most definitely. We're looking at creating more networking platforms because I think that's very important for our members. Yeah. Uh, especially looking at the, how widespread our province is. You know, some provinces, uh, rather regions, are very far away from the central, which is uh, Bloemfontein, the capital. So we're looking at creating platforms to network for our members. Okay. I know uh, uh, Carl has prepared some slides for us that I saw, so I know he's going to talk a bit more about that. So um, there's some interesting ideas there in terms of how we can actually go even a level lower than the regional association. Um, to accommodate exactly that um, need. But thank you very much and uh, all the best there with, um, you know, so the center of our country and, and building Ibasa, um, the Ibasa base there. Um, we are pressed for time, so we do need to move on. So Vinod uh, Kilicharan from uh, Gauteng, from Johannesburg, if I can bring you on as the chair of that region, um, the economic hub. Thank you, Christoph. We are looking for some leadership in that regard too. So what's yeah, happening? And, uh, and no, thank you, thank you, th thank you to you all, and uh, thank you to my fellow uh, uh, regional uh, chairs. Um, and I think this uh, this 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 webinar is a welcome start to the year, um, specifically for the launching of, of of regions or sharing best practices amongst uh, the regions. Um, I'm quite excited about what uh, what what's going to happen and 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 it's going to take place during the year. Uh, I also want to say that is that is that while we are the the the, the in terms of numbers we are the largest number in terms of of, of a region. Um, uh, there's also quite a large amount of of members who are not in good standing, but we want to make this appeal to all members that are not in good standing to please approach us, so that we can uh, sort out some terms and uh, terms with them. We understand the economic conditions of the country. And yes, Ibasa, yes, we would like to be of, of some assistance and help to them so that they can become regular. Um, I concur with a lot of the, uh, my, my, uh, my fellow colleagues uh, in terms of uh, uh, <clears throat> professionalization, uh, uh, CPDs, 
regulating uh, the, the curriculum, uh, yes, I think that there's also uh, uh, things that we need to look at. Um, I also would like to, to say to the, 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 the members of the Gauteng region, yes, it's taken a bit of time for us to get where we are, but at least now we can say that we have the infrastructure, we have a policies in place, uh, so, uh, you know, we can now start uh, getting moving. We also have a lot of uh, MOUs with uh, uh, important stakeholders like the CEDAs and the CIFAs and, uh, you know, still a good few that are in the pipeline. And I think that once all these uh, stakeholders and, and, and MOUs are, are concluded, which should be soon, um, we'll have a better platform to work from in terms of our membership and in able to, uh, the, uh, the, the added value that IBASA can add to our, me our members in going forward. Um, from the Gauteng region, what we would like to appeal to all the members is that, is that, is that we would like to start uh, with the launch of an interim committee. And yes, we are also widely spread and very widely spread in, in this country. And I'm sure I've looked at Carol's uh, uh, presentation and, 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 and I've learned quite a bit about that because maybe it's something I need to also relook at in terms of where people are placed and, 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 and in terms of, but we have, a, we have in terms of our terms of reference where we can have sub-regions. And I'd like to, to encourage members uh, that uh, would like to join the interim committee to please, and I think we need to put this up on our website, is the terms of reference so that they understand how the committees are going to work or the regional committees are going to operate from. Um, one other thing that I also would like to encourage a lot of, our, of my fellow chair uh, uh, leaders is uh, we have a youth chapter in Gauteng, and I would like them to encourage them also to try and start looking at that youth chapter. I think that that is an area that, that would give us a lot of leverage going forward uh, in terms of IBASA. Um, yeah, uh, 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 currently there is initiatives from the services CETA in terms of the uh, assess and moderator training. And this I want to appeal to the Gauteng members and maybe to the members of the country is to please get your details updated because we seem to have a high rate of, 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 of of uh, uh, not being able to contact members or email addresses are outdated. Uh, so please, if they can, we can appeal to them to get all their details updated, it would make our life a lot more easier. And we can then offer them the initiatives through the electronic media a lot more easier. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the, the CEO and the chairman and the deputy chair and my fellow EXCO members for making it possible for us to get to this uh, stage of, 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 of where we're able to launch in terms of policy and infrastructure. And uh, to the Enterprise Planning Institute, yes, thanks for, for this initiative. And um, yes, I'm looking forward to, to the year ahead and the year ahead as a, a, in terms of the regional structures and the regionals operating. And yes, we will have some challenges, but that's what life's about. Thank you, uh, uh, Christoph. Yes, uh, thanks for not for reminding us about that. that uh, we should not expect everything is going to run smooth immediately. One thing that you said, so, and it's up to us to actually make it work and improve it. But secondly, that there's been a lot of work that actually has gone into us bringing to this point where we are now, so that in the regions we can um, get more active. So um, uh, we must recognize that too. Um, and I think a lot of, from what I've, from the sidelines seen in terms of getting the structures ready for Ibasa. A lot of that has happened um, under um, a new leadership and the chairmanship of um, um, uh, in the in the Ibasa board uh, level, um, and in the office too. Of course, the tasks of uh, making those things happen. So um, that will continue, um, but with the support of the members. And I think that's why this webinar is so important, because the invitation is out there for you either to join a committee or to join a regional association or at least be active in that regional association activities when it when it gets going, because it's our association. Um, it's not someone else's. So before I get to you, Carl, maybe we can just quickly look at what our poll shows us. We say the most important things are that we are looking uh, from an institute like Ibasa. And of course, the big one is, as, as uh, Ricardo also reminded us, that uh, recognition as professional um, in the industry. So the grading and recognition in the industry as someone that's been checked out and that can offer a good service to clients is by far the most important for everyone. 84% of those on the webinar, U percent stands uh, networking. So connecting with others in my region and 
Um, there, the building of a community of practice, of course, is important. And the third is that real life uh, capacity building, training, uh, access to improving our skills and our ability to serve our clients. And that can't be done in any other way than through regional activities because the country is just too big. So there are two, at least number two and three are regional competencies that um, the regional associations will have uh, the challenge set for them to start addressing and attract uh, members. So on that point, if we can, um, Carl, if you can, I'll, I'll, I'll open your uh, presentation just now. Um, if you can um, get us going on what is happening in the Western Cape. And I know, guys, we are uh, pressed for time. So um, perhaps we will be able to keep answering questions after the hour. But at least we will have the main stuff um, covered by um, 12 o'clock. So those that need to go can do so. Um, but if I can ask Carl that... Um, you share with us what's happening in the Western Cape. I saw, I've heard the, the CEO has got great expectation of you, so no pressure. Thank you, uh, Christoph, and uh, yeah, everybody uh, attending, also the, the members from the Western Cape and visitors from the Western Cape. We appreciate your time. Um, yeah, I think what uh, I don't see the... Uh, I don't see the presentation coming up. Is it there? there? There we are. Can we go back to one slide just quickly? There we are. Yeah. Okay. So quickly, uh, Christoph, uh, from the Western Cape perspective, um, uh, Ibasa has got a business advising excellent slogan. That's what we're driving. I'm not going to repeat what the other chairs has said because I think the about the quality, CPD, excellence. That is what uh, all is striving for. The poll just confirmed professional um, accreditation, uh, grading, and local networking. So, and through discussion of a small group in the Western Cape, we realized that uh, really, um, if you want to build excellence, it is about people wanting to deal with people that they trust. And people trust people that they know. And therefore we decided instead of trying to build the Western Cape from the top down, which we've tried, I think twice before, we'd rather build it on a cellular level from the bottom up. And therefore we are going to start with uh, districts. So if you go to the next slide, you can get an idea. Um, the regional, the Western Cape Regional Association Committee is basically made up of nine district leaders, theoretically. And what we use is basically the five uh, rural, med uh, rural districts, and then we've divided Cape Town Metro into four districts uh, also. And you can see the map there of, of the Cape Town Metro. Uh, Overall, we've got a, a lot of members in the Western Cape, um, I think 170 uh, in good standing and 62 um, debtors. But uh, you can see the bulk are in the set, city central, 131 members. And there I've sent out an email and we're looking for somebody to raise their hand to take the lead. In the south, we've got Southern Ca uh, Cape Town uh, South. We've got 82 members in good standing and Lynn Maggots raised her head and uh, to say she'll take the lead. In Cape Town Northern Suburbs, uh, we've got 67 members still waiting for somebody to raise their hand there. And then in the Hollyburg, we've got seven members and Olsen has raised his hand. So if we move to the next slide, you'll see the rural districts, which is outside the metro, we've got five two of the districts we've got currently no members so very low membership levels in outside the Cape Town metro but we're fortunate we've uh, got in the west coast, coast at least already one strong leader there uh, Luther Diedrichs and Saldana has also helped a lot with shaping the this whole strategy and and a lot of work done behind the scenes thank you Luther and he will drive the west coast startup from Saldana uh, in uh, the Cape Winelands, we've got seven members and Alec from Breda, uh, uh, Breda Valley uh, in, in Worcester has raised his hand to, to take the lead and build that. And then in Eden, we've got currently two members, 
uh, one in good standing, and the Molef has raised his hand. He's situated in Mosul Bay, and and he will take the lead. And I will share uh, in the chat column all the contact details of these members as well as mine, that people can connect uh, to us uh, going forward. So if you can move to the next one, yeah. So important for us is building from the bars of uh, uh, vision. We said, listen, our mission in the in the Western Cape is to to be considered firstly as an integral part for sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, local economic development. For that, um, uh, some of the other leaders is already, regional leaders already uh, referred to that, that we've got to get involved in local economic uh, activity, municipal driven uh, level. And the second thing is that we want as an outcome that the market drives our quality demand. In other words, that customers would be the uh, government, corporate, incubators, whoever, that they would say, but listen, I want business advisors that are accredited, that I can measure to a standard, hold to a standard. So we, we want those outcomes. And we believe the driver of that is firstly create an accessible network of professional business advisors uh, through partnering with the local stakeholders. So we've got to build that network with the local government, the local business chamber and everybody. And actually the second driver is the professional quality assurance via BASA accreditation. And that's what the mission that we're trying to do. How to get there, next slide, thank you. Uh, is then uh, getting volunteering interim leaders that can uh, set up the districts. Um, even from just a chapter level, a B municipality level, as we have in the rural areas currently. We're still needing somebody in city metro and in city northern suburbs to raise their hand. Uh, I've communicated with the CBAs and the PBAs, looking for them to take up the leadership in those areas. The first step would for us be to set up an uh, interim district or chapter member committee. We will provide them with the member list, the terms of reference, a system with planning, networking assistance. Again, there, Luth has done a lot of work. He's developed this model and we can share a lot. I've had discussions with some of the other leaders already. So they're already starting to learn from his experience and we can sh share that around and build that also outside the Western Cape. It's not only for us. Uh, the second thing is to do is to build a network with local stakeholders, as I said, you know, create that network where with local government, corporates, with business associations, the business development organizations, because we need to ensure that the local IBASA chapter is seen as a key partner in sustainable and successful local economic development. That's what we want to achieve. So that's where we've got to go. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, um, Crystal, for the opportunity. Um, I will upload the contact detail. Um, there's my contact detail, but I'll also the regional members, I'll put up their detail. Thank you. Thanks, Carl, uh, for also showing us that uh, it can be built from the bottom. I, I assume that uh, different regions will in fact have different needs, or am I wrong there? Uh, yes, I, I, I mean, nat naturally the distribution, uh, I assume, would be different, um, although I think it will be very uh, similar to the Western Cape in the sense that the bulk of the people are sitting in the metros, uh, and we know the, re uh, so in a sense, you almost have an oversupply of business advisors in the metros, and in the rural areas, there's no support, and and we really need to think wider than just our current membership and even just wider than business advisors to build a rural network also. So um, I think creating that network and becoming part of that economic development team within a municipal area where the growth hub is, is essential for us. We can't just sit on the side and advise people. We've got to become part of that internal uh, team of uh, sustainable economic development. And um, and yeah, so everybody will have to adapt to what they uh, need. But I mean, the poll just proven to us uh, that people are looking for local networking, yep. which is the, I think that's true everywhere. Yep. So my, my question in fact would be, and I can direct it to everyone in the room, all the other panelists too. So if you can switch all your cameras on, please, that we can see you too, uh, to you and Joseph. Um, 
are there big variances in terms of our approach? I see. Thank you very much for those of us in the on the panel that have been answering the questions. Most of the questions that have been posted have been answered by text. So um, please add another question if you want. And um, it is now on the hour. So, um, you know, sort of we would understand if some people need to go, but please stay with us because this is really the interesting part of the webinar here today. Um, uh, please post, post more questions for us there if there is something specific that you want to have um, um, answered. Um, I see... Uh, Nanette has, has, has made some comments. Um, and I, uh, some, is, some are asking for, for contact details. So um, that we can, we can share. Please, please, the panelists, maybe we can ask the panelists if you can all just type your contact details into the chat area. If you've done it uh, earlier, please do it again because it's kind of maybe scrolled up um, right to the top. That's from what region you are. So to Melo, can we, if we can see you too, we can, if you can activate your camera part. And then we have the whole panel in front of us. So uh, my last question to Carl was, but I, I'll pose it to everyone, you know, sort of, are there significant differences in the approach we need to follow to be successful in the different regions? Uh, Christoph, yes, I'd like to come in here. Um, I think, yes, that uh, Carl's approach is, uh, is uh, commendable. And I think that there's lots uh, uh, I can learn from it from uh, Gauteng region, which is really very, very, very widely spread, spread out, although it's not the biggest region. So yes, I'm sure I'll be taking some uh, uh, best practices out of uh, out of Carl's uh, 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 presentation. And the other region, Ricardo, is it Simon Eastern Cape? Yes, I think there's a lot of similarity um, between Eastern Cape and Western Cape specifically. Uh, also, looking at the demographics and the spread of our membership at the moment, we've got a very low concentration in the former Transkei area, uh, typically rural, rural environment. But I do believe that that's probably the area we've got to focus on the most. Uh, we find, I've just recently advertised for some business advisory interns, and I found that 60% of my applications are coming from that area. So it shows that people with qualifications are going back there and they aren't finding employment. So maybe this could be a good area for us to explore the potential of the youth chapter in um, mobilizing a, a new breed of, of business advisory capacity. Like they've uh, made some ground in that regard, so we can learn from what they've achieved there. I uh, see uh, we've lost Nolly. Um, but to Melo, it sounded to me like uh, in the free state, your ideas are around the five people that you have and building it from there rather than uh, trying to set up a complicated structure. Nothing complicated at this stage, yes, Ricardo. Let's uh, try and keep it as simple as possible, but obviously uh, with lots to be learned from uh, uh, Western Cape uh, and Eastern Cape uh, as such as well. So thank you for the lessons uh, there, uh, Karel and Ricardo. Yeah. Okay, so um, there are a few questions. Most, most easy is about, um, um, so thank you, by the way, most of it been answered by text. So if you, if you, Question isn't answered yet. Please type it into the QA um, frame that we can address it. Um, I'm just paging through They are sharing of, of contact details and so on there. Um, contact details. Uh, Philemon wants to join us. So, Philemon, if you raise your hand, uh, in fact, I see there are two hands raised. Um, uh, Nanette, I'm not sure if you want to pose your question, Philemon. So, let's say. It's can, so Philemon, if you want to switch on your camera and your microphone, you'll be able to ask, to ask a question. Or to give us an answer, if you can be brief about that, please. But you'll have to activate your microphone and camera. Try do that. Lynn Maggot also has a hand up. Let's see if Lynn wants to come in and say something in the meantime. You'll have to allow your camera and your can you hear me, Christo? Yes, we can hear you. I'm sorry, it's going to take me a while to find the camera, so maybe do without seeing you. Can you can just speak, it's fine. It would have been lovely to see you, but that's fine. Okay. Yes, as you and, and Christoph and maybe Joseph, as well as Lisejo are aware, we've had some challenges with the services CETA in terms of setting up the training sessions. Now, I believe this is the value that can be created by IBASA 
And it is a mechanism to encourage a, a lot of new members. That was a recently we went on a on a drive to recruit members to assist to to come and take to, to attend these training courses. And I mean, among all of us in the Western Cape, we've now got egg on our face in that there was some expectation created. People were willing to come on board to get this training. And now the training hasn't happened. We hear from you that there's been discussions, but I'm not sure anybody understand what the details are. Joseph, if you can give us some feedback in that regard, please. Did you get the question, uh, Joseph? Uh, you must unmute. Yes, I, I had the question. Um, I think let us be uh, patient at the moment. Um, we, we have had the discussion briefly yesterday with regards to training in all the areas. The training will continue. Remember that the services CETA have discovered. Now, the, the challenge is that people should not, those people who are going to be trained should not want to control and have it to be structured to suit them. It's not going to be possible. Whatever that we're going to be doing, it has got to unfortunately suit the services theater. So the arrangement, the logistics and all that. So, and it's not something that Ibasa is in full control thereof. So we have got to be patient and allow that process to evolve the way it will um, also not uh, want to create the impression to the owners of the project that we want to run this project. It shouldn't be uh, construed that way. So I understand the frustration that Western Cape has ex experienced. We have discussed that they are actually streamlining the system in such a way because what they do, they appoint a trainer in the area and there is an, a minimum number of people that have got to be enrolled. So if people are less, then we've got to accommodate them. We've got to allow that process to be finalized by them and to suit them, unfortunately. It's not like we are uh, driving or uh, implementing that part of the arrangement. So unfortunately, uh, it's the situation. Um, can I respond to a few things that or comment about a few things that I had mentioned here while I'm on the floor? So we'll 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 get the chance now to just close out. I just want to get Philemon and and, and Nanette uh, quickly. Um, um, okay, well, that's fine. Been keen on that, uh, Joseph. I'll, we'll come back to you just now. But luckily, okay. we've got a good relationship with Services Cita, if I understand it right. So we solve the issue that Lynn is um, uh, raising. Should perhaps not be that complicated since our relationship is is fairly solid. So Philemon, if you want to uh, pose your question quickly. Yes, please. Uh... Chairperson, thank you for, uh, for this opportunity uh, to join Ibaza. Uh, does everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You can speak. Okay. Um, I just like to, to uh, you know, I just like to make input on um, the business advising qualification that permits Ibaza to make sure that its members are trained in business advising uh, 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 qualification. So I have a proposal to say, uh, how about if Ibaza uh, throughout the, the country can be able to uh, train maybe, let's say, uh, 50 per province to train uh, or to develop a leadership on business advising uh, uh, qualification, so that we can be able to uh, to have number of business advising uh, who can be able to to serve our our SME sector in the province, or maybe at the national level. Mm -hmm. So, but I understand that uh, one of the most important things in uh, business advising qualification is to ensure that members have expertise in mentoring uh, SMEs in advising SMEs, in developing business plans for the SMEs. So uh, for Ibaza, I think it will be a good move if we can, we can have a national leadership to train uh, effective uh, business advising uh, learners in business advising. 
so that you can be able to increase our capacity in terms of uh, uh, advising our SME sector. Again, also we need we need also to, we need also to uh, to forge a partnership with the Office of the Small Small, uh, small Business Development. To ensure that all these uh, uh, small, small business development uh, entities, uh, 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 or its uh, or its service providers, are created with uh, with us. So first thing, maybe we should look on on that thing so that we ensure that um, the Department of Small Business Development and its entities have accredited IBASA members. Secondly. Uh, he bothered to develop uh, uh, a national uh, leadership on small business uh, advice so that we have more more uh, more uh, people to assist assist uh, small business uh, in advising and mentoring. So right. I think my, my, my you're raising my, very important uh, points here, Philemon. Um, if I hear you right, uh, most of this relates to the engagement with the training institutions or the training authorities and the Department of Small Business Development. So perhaps, um, uh, Joseph, if you can include that in your comments uh, back, you know, sort of uh, just to give me a sense of how Ibasa's relationship with those parties is progressing and around the qualification too. But let's shift our attention to the regions. Um, so Philemon, uh, we'll give to, uh, uh, Joseph a chance just to respond to that when he when he wraps up at the end. But let's hear from the net um, what, uh, what point she wanted to raise quickly, and then we can go through the panel, and if each of you can just uh, think of a concluding remark that you would want to make. And uh, what I want to ask you is to specifically think about a remark that will uh, take us forward into building our membership out. So, um, Lesejo can tell us what the exact number of, of members are right now. Um, but how do we increase that? Yeah, she, she's not, you, should, you should know how many we have uh, right now, Lesejo. Um, but it's about um, a thousand, less than a thousand. So uh, it should be more because there are many more business advisors. So how do we on the regional basis go forward? That's the question I want to pose to you guys based on the discussion we had today, based on the feedback we got through the polls, based on the questions that have been asked. Um, but before we do that, if we can get Nanette a uh, the chance to just uh, make a comment. Uh, Nanette, if you can be brief, please. Hi, yes, um, I hope everybody can hear me. Um, I'm going to go back a few years now. I've been a member and applied for membership quite a number of years ago in the Western Cape. And I'm going to give you a little bit of history, uh, very short. But since that time, I've attended one meeting that I was invited to. From there, no more meetings. So I'm going to, I, I want to be frank to you people today, is that we need to clarify who we are, what do we want to do, and what do we want to achieve with, with Ibasa. I've raised these questions how many times with CEO and with other people. So, A, are we there for the purpose of just being professional membership? I'm a member of various other organizations. So, are we just professional membership? Are we going to create CPD for our, our members? Or are we also going to focus on, on additional um, work uh, being given to these business advisors or membership? Why do we then grow the membership if we're not going to, um, to make use of those members? So, A, uh, my big question and my big concern here is what really do we want to achieve with, with Ibasa? Um, secondly, is how and where do projects actually go to? Uh, if, if these projects get to, to, say, the regional office, who who gets these projects? How does it and who decides how do these projects get allocated? and who manages it for that purpose. Um, then lastly, I've said that I'm willing to, to participate in the, uh, the leadership, um, but obviously with, uh, with regards to all the other questions, I just need to get a better clarity on that. I haven't renewed my membership purely because of the fact that I actually don't know really what Ibasa wants to achieve going forward. Great. I think that's, that's a very pertinent uh, point. Thank you for raising that, um, Nanette, um, because that, that, that is really the pointed question. If we engage on the regions, what, it is, what is it that we are engaging around? Is it to create projects for our members that they can get business? Is it just to create people? Is it about uh, our skills development? If we're not clear about that, we can have misunderstandings and uh, people may be ending up uh, not renewing the membership or being disappointed. 
So um, if I can take that as a general input into the discussion here. Um, so if I can ask the panelists, I see we've uh, lost Arnold. Um, I'm not sure uh, his internet did look a bit um, shaky. Hi, Christoph. So, correct. Yes. Uh, sorry, man. I, 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 I have to, uh, urgent, uh, to attend to something urgently. But uh, from yeah. my side, I just want to round off quickly and say that uh, I, I'd like the Gauteng members to just uh, uh, watch the website uh, for further information uh, in terms of the interim committee. And uh, uh, hopefully that we'll have this uh, done by, I, I think, uh, by the middle of February. Right. Thank you very much. And thanks for all, and thanks for, for all those uh, in attendance today. Yeah. I think it is appreciated. We were 60 people um, in the room today. We had um, 155 people registering, so, but that happens normally with a webinar that everyone can't attend on the mo moment, but we are recording it and it will be available for those that couldn't make it at 11 o'clock today to attend, so they can also catch up. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, the three regional chairs remaining in the room, plus the CEO and our CEO, um, I think we'll, we'll work towards um, uh, Joseph giving you the last uh, say um, in the webinar. So, um, Perhaps if we can start with you, Lisejo, from an organizational perspective, you don't need to have a fight. From an organizational perspective, what can regions expect um, the office in Pretoria to be offering them so that they can do their job well? Realistically. So it may be little, I don't know. Thank you, Chris. Um, from our side as the head office, as you know, our regions will be relaunched, many of them this month. Um, with each physical launch that will be happening, our CEO, chairman, and myself will be there to launch the regions. Um, as you know, we are owned by our members, we're a nonprofit company. So for those who do decide to put in the work and work with us, we'll be supporting them in terms of some of the fees that we may have. But we are looking for people with a heart to volunteer and to assist in building this institute up, not only for our members' benefit, but for the businesses out there and our country overall. There's a lot of expectation for business advisors, and some of it, unfortunately, is unrealistic. I think business advisors can do what they can with the relevant resources. So we are engaging with a number of stakeholders who play a significant role in the sector, such as the Department of Small Business, as well as other players. One initiative that was also mentioned by the CEO that we're active in is the International Conference of Business Advising. This is a great platform where different stakeholders come together to discuss business advising. So for the regions, we are really giving our members an opportunity to use the regions to have their voice and to have us support them. Yep. Another question that was asked was by Salwin. I believe he's struggling just to raise his hand. He wanted to know what's happening with retired members. And just to let everybody know, the CEO presented quite a conclusive membership category, which included the category of retired slash pensioners who are members who can also participate. So that's definitely work in progress. We are definitely looking to take advantage of well-experienced members who also happen to be retired to remain active as well. So quite a number of things happening at the same time. So you can expect that we will be working overtime on, on getting the regions to be functional, but we will also be expecting the regions to also put in work as well, especially in this year where a lot of work is going to be happening. So that's our support and that's what we were expecting as well. Thank you, Chris. Not a problem. Chris, I think my everybody, CEO. it looks like uh, Christoph has, uh, Christoph has uh, dropped off somehow. So, um, okay, can I continue? Um, um, Ricardo, can you can we just quickly first move to Ricardo to summarize? Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you, Ricardo. 
Thanks so much, uh, Carl. Um, look, I fully appreciate the comments made by Nanette. I think it's only in really reflecting on these sort of things um, head on that we can improve going forward. There has been a lot of lull in terms of coordination and mobilization of our, our local membership. And that's an area we've got to improve on. For one person to do that, it becomes very difficult. But I do believe having a body or a team around us to make it a lot easier for us to really engage our existing membership and seeing how we can convert some of those who have not yet renewed to come back into the fold. The value proposition has been crystallized a lot over the last um, six months to a year. I think we've got to share that with our, our membership a lot more so they can understand exactly what it is that uh, we, we intend to do and, and, and present uh, in our various provinces. I personally believe going forward that we, we need to look at how we can rally the team together and be intentional in actually making a difference in terms of business advisory space. I think one of the first steps you've got to consider as well, I've made a comment on the chat as well, is that we have to be intentional around ensuring our representation of our advisory boards as well, that we do include both women and young people as well to ensure that we represent those needs. Uh, thanks so much, Carol. Well, thank you, Ricardo. Um... Yeah, I think uh, I've said it all from uh, the Western Cape. Um, I uh, take um, also all the input uh, given. Um, and uh, as said already, we really believe that uh, dealing from a localized level, uh, it's, it's come through that people want not only accreditation and professional development, but they also want in some way after accreditation, we've seen it in the earlier research, they want uh, to participate in opportunities, um, which was not a focus of IBASA from the start. Um, so, uh, um, and we believe that developing those opportunities is a lot easier when it's people within an area working together um, in a municipal, uh, municipality and then we're building it up to a province or region and uh, then whatever national organizational opportunities would arise like the services CETA can happen on that level. So we'll take that forward. Um, I see uh, Joseph has muted his, um, his video. Joseph, can you... Uh, uh, there you are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. If you can maybe just sum up for us, I'll appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me start with Philemon. Um, Philemon, as I was attending this meeting, I was communicating with uh, Services CETA. Some of you may be aware that um, uh, the Monday, the 15th of January, it was the last day of submitting uh, discretionary grant proposals coming from the industry and our members. Now, our members knew about this because of them being members of IBASA. Um, now, we could not, because we do not have candidacy program and learnership, that is why we didn't apply through this past discretionary. And I discussed this yesterday with services leader. And I have just submitted an email where I've requested now, as we were in this meeting, uh, to be assisted by the services CETA so that we should have candidacy. Candidacy is what in the accounting firms it's called articles. And um, the lawyers use the candidacy name a lot. And we are also going to have a learnership where we will be able to take uh, those who are in the lower ranks of the advisory because we are trying to make this a profession as an institute. We are an institute. Some questions from our members, unfortunately, show ignorance of exactly who is IBASA, what IBASA does. You know, we have looked for value by working with the services CETA. We're making sure that our members are able to access opportunities coming from services CETA. Now, our members are people who are supposed to be running their own practices, their own small firms. So when we apply with CIPC for our members to be accredited for business rescue, it means it brings value in his practice if he is a business rescue practitioner. And when we, like now after this meeting, I'm still running late because I've got a one o'clock meeting with a, an institute uh, their name is um, 
They call themselves Institute for Sustainable Risk Management. Now, they will, uh, we are going to be partner with them. And our members who want to understand issues of risk when they are consulting a firm and sustainability, and we will be able to invite them to give us a webinar for an example. And that is the value that we are giving our members. And Philemon, you also said we should have an agreement with the Department of Small Business. Yes, indeed, they were a main, uh, they were the main contributor in terms of finance and also speaking at our ICBA conference. And they have proposed a meeting on the 19th of February where they want to see all the professional bodies that were represented at the ICBA. So we do already have a very good working relationship with them as IBASA on behalf of our members. Now, I think I've covered uh, everything that I have noted in terms of questions that were raised by um, um, uh, Philemon in terms of building capacity, growing our and that is on course, as um, it was um, indicated by uh, as well. Now, uh, let me uh, respond to Nanette and those who agree with Nanette. I saw a number of people who agree with Nanette. Um, Nanette, um, we are currently as an institute uh, are responsible. We are part of the task team that is busy developing standards for this profession. Now, there, there is a problem out there, people who are calling themselves business advisors, those who do not belong to a professional body. Now, those people will not know these minimum standards. Uh, so if you don't renew your membership, you will not be able to know that there is standards in the industry that you need to know and we will be assisting our members with these standards so that when you are given a task to go and assist a business, there should be minimum standards that you should adhere to. And when you go and go and develop a business plan or whatever, a, or turn around strategy, and only to find that you have not met the minimum standard, you may be sued by that member. So uh, I, let me caution those members who are saying they will not uh, renew their membership uh, because they don't see value from IBASA. Obviously, we are not a statutory body, and people uh, can voluntary. It's a, you are a member by voluntary, but the discussions that we are currently having with uh, various stakeholders is to make this a requirement for the Department of Small Business or CEDA, CIFA, to use only accredited, graded professional business advisors. So there are a number of activities that are there. And uh, Ninette said she, uh, she has only attended one minute. And our members should appreciate that it's part of uh, the new drive that we have, that today we are launching regional associations. They were never there for the past, for the past 20 years. And this year is the 20th year of our institute. I've given a proposal to the board asking them that we must make noises about the 18th year. And people have got different views. They're not excited like some of us are excited about us having reached the 20th year of this organization. We didn't have regional associations. That is why, and I like what Ricardo said, that's why a lot of people don't know the value proposition which is there. And the things that I always, um, um, uh, uh, Chris always asked me to speak before everybody. And what I present is the value proposition of IBASA. It's exactly what IBASA can do for members. And there is value that we believe we are giving our members. We're going out there and we're still one of the cheapest institutes in the country where we don't have any one member paying over uh, two grand. I'm paying 5,000 to uh, Exaipa. And uh, fortunately, because of my age, which I've also made a proposal with IBASA, I'm paying only 1,200 at Saika. And I've done a proposal that will reduce our fees at, at, um, at this institute. And as a member of the Institute of Directors, I'm paying, I think, over three grand as well for my membership there. So for the value that I believe we're giving our members, we may not have uh, that close magazine at the moment. We may not have a newsletter that is full of information. 
but there are things that we are doing on the ground that will benefit these professionals who are running their practices now. If you are a small business running a consultancy firm, we are saying Ibasa, it's where you should be so that you know what's happening on the ground. And I believe you will be doing your business this favor if you don't join Ibasa at this stage, especially with the relationships that we are building with various stakeholders in the industry. And especially with the issue of McKenzie, the issue of KPMG and all that, there's going to be more regulations. We had the president, the new president of the ANC stating that uh, even these accounting um, uh, organizations or accounting firms that are giving wrong reports, they will have to be held account accountable. And they are acting as business advisors, not being members of a professional body. And that is where we come bringing value for the interest. Because remember, everything is about public interest for the public there to protect them. And our public must be protected. So if you're not a member of IBASA, you will not know of the regulations. You will not be able to attend these webinars. And there's been a proposal for ever coming from Christoph of wanting to train our members through uh, peer groups and uh, on online and all that. And these things is because of different views that we have from members that haven't taken place. Uh, the first time he introduced me and he spoke to me, I said, by all means, I want us to do that. But it's two, three years down the line. It hasn't started it's because this organization is not owned by an individual. We've got people who are running this organization who come with their different views. And it takes long for some of these things to implement. When I joined this institute nine years ago, I said, I want us to have strong regional association because I was coming from Saipa that has very strong regional associations. It has taken us nine years today to implement this. It was one of my visions. And when I started, I said, I want us to have a youth chapter. It took me eight years, only uh, two, um, seven years for us to have that and all that. But, and it's for fighting, this fighting spirit that some of us have and the passion that we have about this institute that we have insisted when other people did not even want us to be here, to be here, you know? So um, we believe that this organization will add value, will grow your business if you remain very close with us. We are also, because remember, um, the list is very long. Lawyers, we have members who are lawyers, advocates. We have members who are engineers. We've got members who are BE verification agency. We've got members who are in construction. So our profession cuts across all professions in the country. So we are an institute which, when I speak to other government people, they say, you are the guys that we should really make sure that you are everywhere and you are respected as a professional body because we are professionalizing industries that are very difficult to professionalize. And that's what we are doing. And there are people in government who are seeing value from us. And I'm pleased, I'm very happy to report that. And there are many things that are going to be happening with this organization this year when we celebrate our 20th year. And um, please, Mr. Chairman, help us in the board when we discuss this thing. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, the Chairman of Western Cape, you are looking at me now, please. Um, let's, let's have this um, year being the 20th year of IBASA and where it's going to give value to its members and also those who are going to join this institute. And we are being supported by various agencies in government. And let us have professionals who will have been graded appropriately and given a proper grade. Thank you. Thank you. That's, of course, the most important part is that quality that we assure as an institute for the industry through the grading. Um, but it is an unfolding discussion. And um, my understanding, at least, is that since we are a membership organization, it's up to us as members to make sure that the organization is what we want. So I just want to apologize for I, I had the internet glitch here. I don't know what happened. I went into a dark moment for a few minutes. Yeah, Christoph, I I, can I leave, please, if you don't mind? I have to leave now. In fact, um, the other panelists that had to leave also indicated that they had prior arrangements. We allowed the webinar to run on. It was supposed to end at 12 o'clock. Thank you for those 30-odd people that stayed on. Um, other attendees also had to run. So I'm not sure if Mr. or Carl would like to make a final comment, but that's enough from me. Um, just to say that on the IBASA website, 
there is a page that says webinars and you can see past webinars by opening that page, including a recording of this one very soon. Um, and of course, our next webinar, to sign up for that, you go to webinar.the-epi.org um, and you'll get your link to join our February webinar. The topic is still to be decided or confirmed, but it is going to be something engaging and exciting. So, Carl, Christoph, we'll see. Carl, yeah, from you. Christoph, thank, thank you very much. I, I think uh, one request from my side is that people need to think where they want to link in, whether they want to network and go onto the website and, and, and indicate on the website what address they want to operate from. Because we've got members who indicates their addresses in the USA and in the Congo and everywhere. So we don't know where to place them, where to network them. Um, uh, people might have offices in town, so they'll all give their office uh, address or a po post box address. So we don't know where to group them in and link them into a a district or a chapter. So if people can make sure they've got relevant uh, contact information, um, that will help a lot with communicating with them. So go to the website, uh, sign in into your account, update your information and put the address there that is the one that you wish to be the address that your interaction with Ibasa is organized around. Thanks thanks for that, Karan. Lesejo, any last point from you? Thank you. Um, from my side, it's going to be an exciting 2018. And I would just like to encourage all our members, come on board. It's going to be very, very good for you to know what's happening. There's a lot of need out there for business advising. And we are making the right noise that will benefit you in the long run. And you will be those members who will then look back and say, the value that I was looking for is the value that I'm seeing that's going to translate not only into good networking opportunities, but also into the level that we would like the designations that we offer to be recognized at. The other thing is we have a lot of work ahead of us. And we would just also request our members to continue to be patient with us the type of expectations that are out there and the need that is what we're trying to meet up with and as you see the webinar platform that we've availed every month to the public is one of our initiatives to make sure that there is more communication coming out of the head office do drop us an email if there's something that you would like to know or you'd like more information on and we do try our best to get back at you but in 2018, make a decision to join a region. Um, that is the best way for you to know what's going on, the best way for your input to be heard. And tell a friend about us if you really feel that this organization is taking you places. So over to you, Chris. I'm excited. We're ready for 2018. No, that's not over to me. That's uh, signing out. So thank you much yeah. for those that stayed on. Um, Join us in building Ibasa into a really impactful organization. And looking forward to seeing you next month on our webinar. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.